Hey, what's up, guys? This is Real Time Glover. We're going to be looking at some of the new cards for Rastakhan's Rumble, the new Hearthstone expansion. Uh, we This is round three, so we're going to be looking at the cards from November 19th, uh, which was this past Monday. Uh, Blizzard had the, uh, the reveal trailer, or, um, the reveal stream, where they released a ton of new cards, and uh, it's, it's really cool. I, I like a lot of these new cards. Um, yeah, in my last video, I was like complaining about how Blizzard was releasing like freaking one card a week or whatever. They were just really blue balling us, and then now they're releasing like ten a day, and I can't even keep up. So uh, thanks for uh, listening to me, Blizz. So it is six o'clock at night over here in uh, good old Ohio. I am wearing sunglasses and drinking coffee at night. So, you know, that's cool. So let's just get through these guys. I gotta catch up. Uh, so, first we got... Ironhide Direhorn. 7 mana, 7-7 seven, seven, Druid Minion. Overkill, summon a 5-5 five, five Ironhide Runt. This is not an interesting card to me at all. And I think it sucks. I, I can't see a world where this is good. Druids can do so much better on 7 mana than this. Um, or maybe not specifically 7 mana, just they have they already have so much late game that like who who cares about Ironhide Direhorn? You're all your you're you're playing a 7 mana 7/7 seven, seven, do nothing and then maybe next turn you can get a 5/5. Five, five. Maybe. But, like, who, who cares, you know? You know, you can play, um... Druids could play a 5-10 Taunt on 7 mana, and they don't even run that. Like, why is this better than Ancient of War? Yes, you can get a 5-5 next turn, but who cares? So, I, I don't see this seeing play. It has the Beast Tag, I don't think that matters. I don't see this seeing any play. I mean, I guess you can, like, uh, Witching Hour this for, like, to get this back for three mana, but I mean, playing this on three mana is pretty good, like, with Witching Hour, but you can play Hadronox and <laughs> get, you know, a board of taunts. You know, you can get, like, you can do, like, a 30 mana turn with Hadronox Naturalize instead of this. So, you know, I mean, maybe after Hadronox rotates out, and every other good druid card <laughs> rotates out. Um, I don't know, man. This is not this is not making the cut for me. I don't see a world where this is good. Uh, maybe in a it's pretty good in arena. You know, a vanilla seven seven is playable in arena, and um, if you get a five five out of it, it's it's good. And if you get two five fives, you're it's it's really good in arena. So you know, sometimes it's gonna be pretty good in arena. Um, in fact, I think it's actually, I would pick this over pretty much any other, this is, a, as far as late game goes in arena, this is really strong. You know, if you got a, if you got a good curve going, you need some late game, this is a really good card in arena. Uh, Indians constructed though, no way. Alright. Next we got... A uh, legendary neutral minion, Undasta. The, the the neutral legendaries are always pretty cool. I, I've noticed they're always like some really interesting effects. So we got the nine mana Undasta, seven seven, beast, rush, and overkill. Summon a beast from your hand. I love this card. So it's nine mana seven seven. So bad stats. Like, bad for 9 mana. So when you look at that, you say, it better have a damn good effect. And it does. It has Rush, first of all. So you kill, you can trade with, you know, basically any minion in the game. Um, and you'll almost always have Overkill. I mean, if, if you're playing against an opponent that doesn't have a beast... Or, I'm sorry, if you're playing against an opponent that doesn't have a minion on board on turn 9, they have no minion on board that has less than 
seven that does that doesn't have less than seven health. So I mean, most of the time they're gonna have, you know, at least a two drop, three drop, whatever. Um, in almost every case on nine mana, they're gonna have some kind of you know mid to early game minion on the board, or they'll have something. Undasa can kill that for free, and you'll have like a seven two or something left over. And then if you if you build your deck around this, I mean this is a build around card. So if you're playing Udasta, you're gonna be playing some some big boy beasts in your hand. And uh, you know, if you play enough of them, you if you can get this off consistently, this is a great card. I mean, the 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 obviously the archetype that stands out to me for Undasta is uh like Death Rattle Recruit Hunter. Um, because they already run they already run like Katharina. They already run, um, you know, like King Crush and, uh, what is it, um, Charge Devil Sar. And this fits perfectly in that. Because if you, if you're playing that deck, you want these big beasts to stay in your deck. And then you Katharina and you recruit them out. And then they, they kill something or they go face. Um, either way, it's pretty good for you. And then when you draw these big beasts, you're like, shit. I don't want to draw them. I want to recruit them out. Well, now you're not that upset when you draw them because then you can just do Dasta and then they'll come out of your hand for free. So you play, so you play uh, Undasta, it kills something, then you get a free King Crush out of your hand, and then that kills something, and then you have a uh, seven two and an eight four on board. Yeah, and you've killed two of your opponent's minions. You're gonna be really damn happy that you have this guy in your deck. Undasta is nuts. I think this is a really good card. It's definitely going to push the uh, the Big Beast Recruit Hunter build that we're already seeing. This is just going to make that more consistent and better. Uh, it's it's a really neat card. Um, I'm on board for any card that makes King Crush playable. Also, this is really good with um, Shrival the Tiger, the new Paladin uh, Lo Loa Legendary. Um, because you can just you can just do Dasta, rush and kill something, then you get Shrivala, the 7-5. That kills something and is Divine Shield, so you'll still have the 7-5. And it'll life steal you back up. So you're basically removing two guys and you're going to get a 7-something. And then you'll have a 7-5 with life steal. Like, after you kill two guys. So, yeah, that's really, really good. Undasta is going to see play, I think. I, I, I can't imagine a world where Hunter at least doesn't play Undasta. But we gotta remember that Charge Devil Sword is neutral. So we might be seeing some weird ass decks like Priest running Dasta that gets a Charge Devil Star out. Because that's a really good turn nine. Undasta kills something, get a Devil Star, kill something else, or go face and for seven damage. That's a good turn for Priest. That's a good turn for any deck. So I think Undasta is really cool and it opens up a lot. And I really like that it's neutral. Um yeah, this is this this could be really interesting. I, I definitely can see myself playing some really weird like meme priest deck with Undasta and Charge Devil Star. Not just I don't know why I'm saying priest, just like you can do that in any deck. And it's good. Alright, now we got the meme card, Gurubashi Chicken. I mean what is there to say? This card sucks, obviously. It's a one mana one one overkill plus five attack. Um, it's literally the same thing as uh, Angry Chicken, except it has it's 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 worse Angry Chicken, because for Angry Chicken all you have to do is buff the health, and then trade into something and it'll it'll get the Enrage buff. This you have to you have to increase the health so it'll survive, and you have to increase the attack so that it'll actually be able to overkill something to get the attack. So, I mean, this card, obviously this card sucks. It's never going to see play. Unless you're, like, just really desperate to get on Troll Den, and, and you want, you just want to prove, you want to prove, like, me wrong, and say, you know, ooh, Gurubashi Chicken is good. Look, I made, like, I, I got this OTK, you know, Paladin deck, or some stupid shit. Or, um, yeah, yeah, this is never going to see play. Uh, it, it, it's worth noting that, um, you can get this in, like, uh, like your zombies, your zombies pool. Um, so, you know, maybe, maybe the overkill plus five is, is decent on, you know, a, a guy that already has charge and then you can kill something and then, you know, it might be an okay, like cheap, 
uh, tack on to, to a zombies, but in constructed no way. All right, a new challenger. Seven mana spell for Paladin. Discover a six cost minion. Summon it with Taunt and Divide Shield. Okay. So obviously they're um they're trying to push this uh, Paladin big spell big spell Pally deck. And this is a perfect card for that archetype. Um, because most of Pally's good. They, they're good expensive spells are like all these buff cards where if you don't have any minions on board they just do nothing <clears throat> and this is one of those cards that you can just play whenever you want you're winning play it you're not winning play it uh you know it's, it's just good it's just good whatever um so how good are six drops so i was looking through them a lot of people were saying, like, on average, you're going to get, like, a 5-5. Five, five. So, 5-5 five, five with Taunt Divine Shield. Eh, it's not great. Um, there's a lot of interesting 6-drops, though. Like, uh, you know, there's stuff like um, the Damage Stegatron, which is a 5-12 Taunt. And then, so you'll get that undamaged. So, it's just a 5-12. And then you'll get the Divine Shield on it. That's really good. You're going to be really happy if you get that. Uh, if you get Cairn, you're going to be pretty happy about that. Because you're going to you're gonna get Cairn with the Divine Shield and Taunt, then you'll get another 4-5 when he dies. You're pretty happy about that. Um, you might get a... Uh, in some fringe scenarios, uh, you might get, like, Reckless Rocketeer for, like, lethal. I mean, that's kind of, you know, whatever. Or Because um, there's a couple charge guys. There's, there's the Reckless Rocketeer... And then there's a uh, Argent Commander, so uh, for five damage or four damage respectively, you could get like a, a pretty sweet lethal highlight there. Um, but you know, realistically, you want this card for you know you're kind of starting to fall behind the board. Uh, you get this high tempo swing with you know the Divine Shield, six drop, or, or if you're kind of starting to die, this is you get a big six drop. You give it Taunt because of New Challenger. You're going to be pretty happy about that. It's worth noting that, you know, a lot of people have been saying, you know, there's all these shitty six drops, you know, you're going to get, you're probably going to get a bad six drop. You're discovering it. So you have three options. Most likely of the three, there's enough good six drops that one of them is going to be like above average. You know what I mean? So you got to, you got to factor that in. It's not just one of those, like, it's not like, um, you know, one of those stupid Medivh, one of those stupid Karazhan portals where you just get a random, you know, six drop or whatever, random five drop. Like, this is Discover a six drop. So, that's def that's really important for, for a car like this. Um, so, if it's, if one of those, like, big spell paladin Shrivala decks, if those are good, this is obviously going to make the cut. In, in a not big spell paladin, I don't know if this is good enough. You know, I don't know if big, I don't know if like Control Paladin needs something like this. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see. Um, this is also one of those cards that might get better or worse in future expansions because different six drops will rotate in and out of the game. So, you know, that's definitely worth looking at. Like if we just get like some crazy overstatted six mana paladin like min like legendary or minion at some point within the next couple expansions this card could be just nuts because the occurrence bonus will just you'll get that most of the time and so 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 this card is like pretty variable in the future um but uh i think it's a pretty interesting card and uh i don't think it's it, it could go either way for me I think it's alright. Alright, Zentimo is the Shaman Legendary. Whenever you target a minion with a spell, it also targets adjacent ones. So, this card is batshit insane. Three mana. Three mana, triple hex. Let that sink in. You're, you're in a control game. 
your 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 druid opponent plays you know ha, he has a hadronox and a lich king on board or something or you know a, a sleepy dragon and a drag and a and a dragon hatcher and some other stupid you know thing on board it's a bunch of big minions used in Teemo. three of his guys hexed not removed hexed that's nuts man I mean that messes up people's hadronox you're facing a ghoul Dan and they uh they 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 fill their board with like void like a void lord or two and some doom guards this this like like there's so many games where you're p playing against a control lock not the control lock isn't as like relevant anymore but it, it it totally could be in the future and uh you play this guy against them they get like three void lords after their ghoul Dan you could potentially hex all three depending on their positioning that's that's nuts. So in, so, in the control matchups, and Timo's crazy, crazy, crazy good. Um, but we also have to think about the aggro side of Sentimo, because he is also nuts in aggro. So I haven't seen anyone really talk about this, but if you play Sentimo, so so say you have like three minions on board, it's turn seven. You're a shaman, you got three minions on board. Is it likely to have three minions on board on turn seven as a shaman? Yes. It's shaman. You have all these kind of, you know, token generation kind of kind of things. You play Zentimo. You play Rockbiter on one of those minions, the middle one. You play Rockbiter. It's adjacent minions also get Rockbiter. So it's nine damage. Three, 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 nine. Then you play Wind Fury on the middle one. And the uh, the outside two also get Wind Fury. That's eighteen damage. Se that's a seven mana eighteen damage combo. That's nuts. And then if you have any kind of um, you know, like unstable evolution, you can you can you can you can potentially be evol you can evol you can be evolving three minions at a time every time you unstable. Like you you can have like three totems on the board. And then, like on turn seven or whatever, using Teemo, and you just, you can you can get, uh, four or three five drops. Like, that's pretty good. I I cannot see a world where Zentimo is not insane. Um, and I love these kind of cards that like take advantage of positioning. And Zentimo is just really cool, man. Um, I think he's gonna see a lot of play. And uh, if it's like so, so back to this aggro scenario, if you have three mains on board. It's turn nine. He's in Teemo. You rockbiter, so they, you get you get nine more damage. Then you rockbiter again. Now you're at eighteen. Then you win fury. Thirty six damage. Yeah, that's pretty strong, man. And if you get um, if you throw in some charge guys in the mix, where like. I don't know, like a Stone Tusk Boar or something. And, like, you, you know, for your third minion, you know, you can just throw them in sometimes. Like, turn 10, you have two totems on board. And you, uh, Stone Tusk Boar in the middle, and then Zentimo, Rock Better, Rock Better, Wind Fury, that's game. So, pretty good. Watch out for this guy. Uh, he's also good with, um, the other Shaman Legendary. Uh,. Whatever whatever faces from Boomsday that doubles all your that doubles your next spell, Zentimo works pretty good with that. So, yeah, Zentimo's crazy.